Hello everyone and good day to you. This is Roger, of course, with Grubus Games Unlimited, and I greatly welcome you back to our unboxing of the production copies of Dungeon Crusade. It is very nice to be back with you. I hope you're doing good. Um, of course, we are looking at the Crusade. Well, we already looked at the Crusader of the Realm in the previous two videos. It was part one, part two. And boy, I had to get ready for this one. We are going to look at the absolutely massive um, Slayer of the Realm edition in this two part video. It might be three, maybe two. There is a ton of content inside of this box. And we'll turn it sideways so you can see. It's loaded with some great content I know that you're going to enjoy. But first of all, real quickly, because I know I want to get into that box too. But as always, thank you for your time. You know, I'm very grateful to you. And it's just great to be back with you. I was trying my best to get this video out the other day. And it's just been busy, guys. So please forgive me. So I hope you're doing good. Um, it's, it's about the weekend right now, so I hope you're looking forward to a fantastic weekend. Okay, let's get to the important stuff and then we're gonna get right into this box, okay? First of all, um, I'm gonna be dispatching a special edition of um, the Dungeon Crusade Kickstarter update. This will be featured in it, you know, the production copies of the game. Um, we're gonna do some, well, this video series and then some photos so we can get dispatch an awesome update and let everyone know what's going on. Um, we're gonna be reviewing these this weekend and next week now that we're wrapping up our unboxing series. And then um, everything's looking great, guys. I just wanted to let you know. And then it's on to mass production and fulfillment. I've been talking to our very awesome fulfillment manager, Jeff. He is just a terrific guy. We're gonna be talking more about him. And um, we're looking at when everything starts shipping out, May, June. I want you to have this game ASAP. And everyone does. So shipping is right on the horizon. Real quick, if you're just seeing this, yes, the pledge manager is still open. Um, it's gonna remain open until mass production begins, but that's coming up very soon. So no worries, no rush. Enjoy watching the unboxing. Pledge manager, link in the description, so it's not too late to pre-order the game. But once the pledge manager shuts down, that's it. We will have some reserve copies, you know, that will be coming. So I wanted to say that, and I think without further ado, is that it? Um, I think that's it, because I'm excited. I want to shut up. I want to get into this box for you. If I think of something, we'll just throw it in there. Okay, so let's, um, I'm going to move this out of the way, and let's take a look at the Slayer of the Realm edition of Dungeon Crusade. Actually, before I go, um, Tim, thank you. I met Tim and some new Crusaders. Tim, you said some kind words in the comment section. Thank you very much. Truly, I... It's a pleasure and honor to meet you and everyone else. Tim mentioned something that I never did before, and I did it in the last video. The differences in the additions of the game. Okay? Um, we looked at the Crusader of the Realm. You get the base edition of Dungeon Crusade, which you saw, if you saw the other video, is really a ton of game content. Stuff I was very passionate about for you. You also get the Avalon Adventure Board game, Okay? That is the Crusader of the Realm edition. However, Slayer of the Realm, um, I'll just say this now and then we're gonna get right into the unboxing. We'll put this right over here so you can see that. The Slayer of the Realm is every huge expansion, everything really for Dungeon Crusade. You're getting Dungeon Crusade, like the Crusader of the Realm edition, you're getting the base game, you're getting the Avalon Adventure board game. You are also getting the three extra House of Chance games. We'll look at those as we open it because I want to. I'm really excited to get into this. You are getting the Double Dungeon Expansion Pack add-on, which is Castle Blackwood and the Cavern of Lost Souls. There is 37 unique um, quest tokens with that. Of course, the dungeon boards and 30 unique quests I wrote for the game. You're going to hear my little dog Scooter wanting to go out. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Life happens around me. Hold on, Scooter. You are then going to get the hero expansion, six new heroes. You are also going to get the expert and heroic 
monster difficulty deck. The game ships with normal difficulty monsters, and I assure you those are plenty hard. And what else do you get with this one? You get it, oh, you get the um, you get the, of course the classic footprint monster footprint patrol route die, but you also get that classic skull patrol route die, um, one of my favorites. So, without further ado, now let me move this out of the way. We're going to lay this down and let's have some fun taking a look at the Slayer of the Realm edition of Dungeon Crusade. Give me just a few seconds. Okay, guys, I am back, and let us open the Slayer of the Realm edition and go through this. And like we did with the other format, we'll just take everything out, take a look at that, and then I'll come back, we'll unwrap the cards. And I want to tell you what, as I'm taking this lid off, that I think we'll just go through every card again, if you don't mind. I will probably be a little more quicker. You know, if you did not see... Um, I would recommend watching part two of the um, Crusader of the Realm edition because you can see all of the cards. There's a massive amount of cards. And, you know, I was going to show you just like here. Maybe you would like to see the sides here. So there's the one side there. There was Albus there, the parties, the Heroes Fetch Hound and a uh, Blackwood Prowler. And there's a massive Viper. And there's Kane. Red Feather, our Ranger, and here's one of the eight Guardians. There's Red Widow on the other side, and over here, this is our Rogue, um, Paloon Ganymir, and over here is the toughest Guardian of the eight Guardians. There is Magmus, an Archdemon from the Underworld, and here's Korath Doomswood, our Warlock Hero, and of course, back to Albus and this Blackwood Prowler. So that's the sides for you. Set this up here. Yeah, yeah, I'm so excited to be here with you. I truly, I wanted to get back here and I've been really looking forward to this. Um, let me put the camera here. Okay, so let's go over this. Again, the very awesome um, revised Crusader's Handbook. I'm going to say it again. Ilpo, I saw you comment on a few things. My friend, you are just awesome. It's, it was a pleasure and an honor to work with you. Ilpo was the editor on this. Um, much slimmed down, as I said before. 46 pages, eight rule sets within. And Ilpo was just, he's just awesome. And he has pretty much joined me with Grubus Games Unlimited. We will always be working together on rule books and, and some other things I, I would like to ask him about because he is a very creative individual. So Ilpo and of course Charlene, um, our tech writer, Really, thank you. It, you guys are going to love this rule book. It's been getting excellent reviews. Scenario book, like we looked at before. And I'm just going to say it again. In designing this, guys, I wanted to do something different. You know, this isn't like a, a, a campaign um, type kind of dungeon crawl. Um, you're really, it, this, this is not complex, like I've always said. Once you understand this, it's very easy, but there's um, six different difficulties you can mix and match when you're setting up a scenario. Um, and there's three different game modes. You can just pick, you know, like a difficulty here and set the game up accordingly. You can mix and match things, but you're gonna notice there's these dies right here at D6. You can let fate decide the game you're going to play. So you're gonna roll a D6 for each entry and that will create some crazy um, scenarios for you, or, or, you know, veritables in the game. And as always, Dungeon Crusade is randomly generated each game. You'll never see the same game twice like we looked at before. Here is our board for the Avalon Adventure board game. Take just a quick look at that. Very nice. Okay, so there's that, the Avalon Adventure board game. We looked at that before. Here is the village board. I'm going to point something out to you. So there you go. There's your village, village board. What I wanted to point out is this little building right here. Keep in mind the House of Chance. There, this is actually a little gambling hall. Um, when your heroes go to Celebration Day, that's when your heroes turn in the quests that they completed. They can go in there and play one of four randomly selected games. You roll a D4, basically, and all of the House of Chance games are numbered. Um, or you can just pick one or just roll it die and let fate decide what one game is in the house of chance. You do not use all four games in the house of chance. 
Um, so there you go, there's your village board, looking very nice. And like I said before, this looks identical to the first print run, you know, as in the colors, it's very vibrant. So I hope you can see that in the video. So we're gonna be pulling out those House of Chance games. So remember, that is the House of Chance right there. Okay, and then here is your Dungeon UI board. So there's that, and there's the new Minion um, speed track, movement speed track. So that's new. Um, that's of course in your, um, for those people getting the Crusader upgrade pack. So there is the Dungeon UI board. And then, I've said so many times ready, you of course get the huge map of Avalon that I was so happy to include with all the additions now. Crusader upgrade pack, Crusader of the Realm, and of course Slayer of the Realm. You get a nice cool map of Avalon. Okay, next up, let me make some room over here. These are going to be the dungeon tiles. And I'll tell you what, we looked at these in the Crusader of the Realm edition, but we'll take another quick look. Um, again, Ancient Runes, here's, um, oh wait, Dungeons and Dungeon Crusade, all of them are three by two feet. So they're made up of six of these dungeon tiles. You're gonna kind of go like put one, two, three, and then the other one, two, three, when you arrange them. And there's diagrams in the back of the revised rule book that show you how to put these together. It's, it's quite easy though. If you just follow the patrol routes, everything matches up perfectly. So there is one part of the ancient runes, Reverse side is the Tomb of Kalidor, the ultimate death trap dungeon that has these things I created called environmental hazards. Um, so there's this one. And of course there's a rule set, how to set up the Tomb of Kalidor and some lore and world building I did to set this up with Alistair Kalidar. Very wicked individual. Let me put this over here. Okay, we're looking at the next board. This is of course part of the ancient runes here. Again, nice vibrant colors. Give you a good shot of that. Reverse side, of course, is the Tomb of Kaladar. And like we looked at before, there's one of the six environmental hazards there. Uh, the Noxious Vapor Chamber. You have to stop. Anytime you see these red little um, symbols on the floor, you have to stop, roll a D20, and see like the green mist coming out, it's poison. So your hero can lose essence on that particular one. Oh, and there's the Chamber of Blades, these spinning blades. There's another environmental hazards. Okay, moving right along, we have the next board for the Ancient Runes. Right here. Just real quick notice why I have this here. Like I said, the Avalon Adventure board game and Dungeon Crusade I developed in tandem so a lot of the stuff and the people that you meet um, the factions some quests NPCs tie in the dungeon crusade so I just want to show you this right here see this tomb of st. Viticus there's south and north well in the land of Avalon there is this um, tower called the Tower of st. Viticus I tried to see if it was on the map here real quick so that kind of ties in together I won't give you a spoiler and there it is right there see the tower of St. Viticus. So in that one section of the dungeon, there's a certain quest that kind of goes with this. So just so I to show you how this kind of all ties in together. Okay, so let's get our, I show you the reverse side of that. You know what, I'm sorry. This is the reverse side of the one we just looked at. So there's the Tomb of Kaladar, there's the Halls of the Damned, um, Ancient Crypts South, Ancient Crypts North, and again, look at that detail. Damien Mimaldi, I worked with him, I gave him the prototype I designed. He brought this thing to life with just ultra detailed, um, just incredible. Okay, a few more boards here for the Ancient Runes and the Tomb of Kaladar. Here's our next one here. Very nice. Good shot of that. Ogres layer west so and then flip it over here is another um for the tomb of kaladar here okay i think this is the last one isn't it yeah uh no there's one more okay another one for the ancient runes there's the well of eternity there's actually the well of eternity right there it's a very cool quest i wrote called the mother's request that you'll be in this zone of the dungeon Hero's Vigil. 
Chapel of Light South. Flip it over. And the other one for the two Macau are another environmental hazard right here. There is the sorcery room. It's incredible. I mean, I could still look at this and just like find new stuff. Like Damien just the detail is just outstanding. Okay. Finally, we'll wrap it up with this last board, and then we're gonna take a look at the um, double dungeon expansion. So Here's our last one for the ancient runes. Cesspool South, Cesspool North, the spider layer. Actually, the scenario one is kind of like the not like tutorial, but you'll do a very cool quest um, called the Baron's Wine, and you're gonna be in the spider layer um, when you start out. And here is the runes of Daggerith right here. And then finally, we'll flip this over and here's actually the siege tile for the Tomb of Kaladar. This is where you enter in at. And this is a really quick tip for you. Notice see this dotted line, and they're all like named, you know, the siege tile. Here's the siege tile here, see? This is where your heroes start out, and you place them um, somewhere, you know, within that dotted line. And we looked at this before. If you want some detail, take a look at the skeleton vault. Ultra detailed. Oh, and there, you know, I didn't show you this before. There is another one of those environmental hazards, Pit of Agony. See, like, the ropes there, and there's spikes down there? Um, your hero has to grab onto a rope and then swing across. That's, remember, the red symbol there. You roll a d20. If they slip, boom, they go into the pits, and they will take damage from those spikes. Didn't show you that before. And I'm not, i just give you a teaser here. This is the... Um, Labyrinth of Solitude, and this is the only one that's, it's, it's trap ridden, but there's some treasure chests in the center of it, and this is the only chamber in the game that actually has two doors in here, so it's just, you'll see when you get to this little part of it, it's kind of unique, okay? So there you go, that is that, that is your um, Ancient Runes, and the Tomb of Kaladar. Now, we're going to look at the Double Dungeon Expansion Dungeons. Um, this is Castle Blackwood and the Cavern of Lost Souls. And I'll tell you, I, I love castles, but I researched castles for a few months before I designed, um, you know, this Castle Blackwood. And it came out really nice. Sean Ellis did this one and the Cavern of Lost Souls on the reverse side. So let's take a look at this real quick. There's the Guardhouse there. I should have started out with the siege tile, but actually, let me, let's, there we go. So let's just take a look. This is where you start out at here. There is the siege tile right here. So see the big gates opening to Castle Blackwood. And Sean had the idea to make it look like it was like uh, the start of winter. So there's some snow on the ground and this leads in. There's many little secret paths I made into the castle, into Castle Blackwood. And I'll try to point all those out for you. So there's the siege tile. This is where you start. There's that white dotted line around there. Okay, so interesting places here. There is the Hall of Honor. Check out that statue of that knight there. Again, Sean is just amazing too. A real pleasure and honor to work with him. So there's that one. And if we flip it over, this is the Cavern of Lost Souls. When I designed this one, this really... To me, it feels like, well, it was. It was very inspired by MMORPGs. And it's just, it's, it's three by two feet, but it feels very vast because there's an outdoor area. There's this crypt of the betrayer. There's a small hidden secret dungeon where I'm gonna, I wanna create some monsters that are based off this little secret dungeon. There's the cavern. There's the village of Briarwood. There's just so much on this map. It just feels very vast because there's so many different things. There's secret entrances into the cavern. So I just wanted to let you know, let you know that. There's the Swamp of Sorrow, um, du Dugan's Excavation Camp there. Um, is that the hidden... The Oh, the, hall, the Bellowing Cavern. This is when you get into the cavern itself. Okay, so there's one of those. Go on to the next one. Back over here to Castle Blackwood. 
And again, really, the detail is just incredible on this. And what do we have here? There's the guardhouse. So remember, the siege tile was like kind of right here. Then if you go um, right, you'll end up at the guardhouse of um, Castle Blackwood. Notice these little steps. And then you're over here at the, one of the watchtowers. That's the eastern watchtower. There's, a, there's an eastern and a western. And then notice here's one of those secret entrances into the castle right here where you go into the oratory um, from around here. So there's that. Okay, we're going to flip this over. And this is actually, there you go, there is the siege tile for the Cavern of Lost Souls. So you start out in the bottom left here. There's that dotted line. And then, of course, we just looked at that Swamp of Sorrow. So if you head right, you go into the Swamp of Sorrow. What is that? West. And then you'll go into the Mystic Falls area across this little bridge here. And there's one of the ways to get into the cavern there. Very nice. This is Raven's Cove. There's the ravens there. Again, guys, I, I'm really happy to be here. I'm sorry if I'm taking my time, but I'm really enjoying showing you all this, and I hope that you're excited for it. Okay, well, let's move on to our next one. And, okay, here is the Western Watchtower. Right here. So there's one of the, another one of the watchtowers. So the siege tile would be here this time, and it's going. we're going over here if you went left. And there's the upper bailey of the castle that leads into the Western Watchtower. And then right here is a very cool area called the Queen's Burial Chambers. So we'll take a look at that right here. There's actually a Queen and King's Burial Chamber here. And then we get over to a very cool area called the Royal Graveyard South. And of course there's a North with that. Let's take, whoops, hold on, I gotta adjust the camera real quick. And so let's take a look at real quick the cavern. Here's the Cavern of Lost Souls, and here's what I was talking about. So this is all the way to the far right here is the Crypt of the Betrayer South and Crypt of the Betrayer North. And you're gonna notice like right up here, this leads into that secret dungeon that we'll be seeing in a moment. And then right here, here's this thing called the Hidden Passage. And I'm going to draw your attention to something really quick here. Notice like kind of this wooded secret path area here in this chamber. This is Ren's sanctuary. Um, Ren Osis was a legendary, is a legendary hero in the land of Avalon. So this is kind of like her hideout. But I want to point this out to you. This is the only map that does this. There's actually a ladder that goes down. So notice like there's the ladder here. When you go down... It's kind of a secret way to get into this, this cavern. So notice there and right here, and it just costs one movement point. So if we had four movement, it'd be like one, two, three, four. So this is the only map that has something like that. So you can kind of go underground, so to speak, and into the hidden passage. Okay, getting our next tile here, um, Castle Blackwood again. And we are looking at here, this is the throne room. And I think this is, yeah, the Eastern Ballroom. So this tile would be at the far top right here. So there is the throne room here, it's a cool throne. And here is this area here, the somber forest um, north. And we looked at, remember that little secret entrance into the castle, that somber forest south here. and here is right here the terrace here so there's another way to get into the castle so like kind of to the back to the side notice the stairway and it goes into the eastern ballroom so when we get to the one tile see there's a western ballroom so there's that we're going to flip this over and okay so on the cavern of lost souls this would be to the very top left um of the dungeon or the board. And this is what I was talking about. I created this little village here called Briarwood. And the one scenario I think you'll really enjoy about what happened in the village of Briarwood. So we have um, Southern Briarwood right here, like an old well here, right there. North 
Briarwood, and then here's Eastern Briarwood and um, the Dark Wood Logging Camp. There's that, and there's like a tent and some logs there. And so there's a look at that, and we're gonna flip this over. <coughs> and here is, oops, I'm sorry, we already looked at that. The throne room. So there's that for Castle Blackwood. And then taking a look here, there's, we got a few more to look at. Um, here is the, this is Castle Blackwood. Whoops, turn it this way. And like I said, remember we just looked at the um, Eastern Ballroom. Here is the Western Ballroom. And that leads into the larder of the castle. So here's the larder. And then out of the larder, this gets into this area right here. It's kind of like just a big, um, kind of like a big, you know, not corridor, but just a big room with pillars. And then looking right over here, here is the solar of the castle. Again, I really research castles in designing Castle Blackwood. So here is the solar. So solar, and then one of the ballrooms, the Western ballroom, the larder, and then this area here. We're gonna flip this over. And this, okay, so this is, actually you probably find this pretty interesting. This is the, actually the inside of the cavern on the Cavern of Lost Souls. Here is the Valley of Shadows. So remember we looked at Briarwood. Um, actually, it's got me thinking of the story for Briarwood and some quests. I think you'll really enjoy this. So this is when you come out of Briarwood into the Valley of Shadows. This leads into one part of the cavern right here. So right here is the Forbidden Cave. And if you can notice this, there's a very cool quest. But notice that pit right there, the Eternal Abyss. And there's like these skeletons in there, like they were thrown in there. So that, that deals with a certain quest for the Cavern of Lost Souls. Again, guys, I'm really having an awesome time going over this. I hope you're enjoying it. And then, remember we, we were talking about Red Widow, one of the eight guardians? This is kind of her lair is within the cavern. So here is Red Widow's lair west. Notice all the cobwebs. And then here is Red Widow's lair east. Please excuse Scooter, she is amped up tonight. So there is that, okay? And I think we have one more to look at. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pause and regulate on a few togs over here. Be right back. I apologize about that, guys. It's like, anyone knows me, I love, love dogs. Hence, that's why there's fetch hounds in Dungeon Crusade. And I got three rowdy dogs that I love. So please excuse that. Um, okay, and then last part of Castle Blackwood. And remember, we're looking at the Royal Graveyard. So there's the Royal Graveyard North. This would be at the top left of Castle Blackwood, okay? So there's um, the Royal Graveyard right there. And then here is the King's Burial Chambers. <clears throat> so there is, of course, the Queen's and the King's. And again, another way to kind of get in to Castle Blackwood, through the graveyard, through the King's Burial Chambers, and then you're gonna end up here in the on, Undercroft of the castle. And this right here from the Undercroft will lead to the cellar um, of the castle. And you remember the Queen's Burial Chambers, that leads um, into the Queen's Burial Chambers there. And remember that big room with the pillars? That's where that would connect that, okay? And then, here is, this is the, actually this part right here, this would be at the, for the Cavern of Lost Souls, this is at the top right of that, of the board, the map, the dungeon. This is that hidden dungeon I was talking about. And you know, I don't know if I ever went this in depth with this, but when I designed this dungeon, this map, there's a whole thing for the quest I wrote. So it kind of starts out with here, notice this bloody body here. And I'm, let me tell you something, when I gave Sean, it's kind of like a little crusade, behind the scenes. This section was really, like, this especially was very gory and bloody. It was way toned down. One day I'll have to show you my prototype board I put together, but it was kind of a heavy scene. So Sean kind of just dialed that back. Maybe I'm glad he did, because it was pretty gruesome. But um, right here is the Chamber of Last Rites um, for the Cavern of Lost Souls. 
And then kind of it goes into this creepy part right here. Notice we have a guy right there, a dead guy laying there. This is the Chamber of Lost Souls, right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is the Sanctum of Oblivion right here. And then it goes into um, the Chamber of Lost Souls. And that's what this kind of thing deals right here. Basically when a soul is harvested from a body. And then a very beautiful <coughs> pit of the blood god. And there's a whole thing where people are sacrificed in this secret dungeon. And this is what led to a certain monster or a group of monsters, a race that I want to introduce in the expansion. So that's, um, that's what that area is right here, Pit of the Blood God. So that's kind of like that mini dungeon on the Cavern of Lost Souls. So hopefully you can see what I mean, you know, with Briarwood, a hidden cavern, the Crypt of the Betrayer, that hidden passage with the ladder. It's a very, it's three by two feet, but it's just a very vast dungeon it feels like because it's just so there's so many different areas to it okay so guys that was <clears throat> those were all the dungeons four dungeons um and there's still tons 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 more to look at so let's keep going remember we were talking about the house of chance so i designed these four house of chance games i love them all i've said this so many times this is my favorite one the adventures of bravely the night and um, I wanted to put together like a, a death trap dungeon with an 80s arcade machine. Damon Maimaldi was the artist, gave him the prototype and just incredible. And I said, please put insert gold here with a little coin slot. And you take bravely and you have to go around here and go through this death trap dungeon. And basically your heroes can win money, whatever bravely finds in the death trap dungeon, the heroes get to spend in the village. So there's a little bit about that. And again, you could play all these House of Chance games just, you know, just one off if you just want to play one. So you're going to get the Adventures of Bravely the Night. Remember I was saying the numbers here? The, all the House of Chance games are numbered. You roll a D4, say four comes up. Okay, and then that's the one game in the House of Chance. <coughs> take a look at that, or there's that, rather. And let's take a look at this. Skulljack. Simple form of blackjack, you're getting this with the Slayer of the Realm edition of the three heroes can play. And you know what? In the um, showcase, go in the showcase um, playlist, I played each of the House of Chance games. So if you're interested to see how these play, and it was really a fun video to make, go check that out. Hang out with me in those videos. Um, it's, of course, right here on the channel, showcase series, and look at it's towards the bottom. So you get the Skulljack playing board reverse side is the third game here heroes versus monsters um you have three heroes that have to defend the chapel of light against these invading monsters that keep coming down there again damien my melody art just incredible and there is that and then of course you get tower attack that comes standard in both editions we're going to get to that i think that's on the bottom so Heroes versus Monsters. So that is the third House of Chance game. And this is your battle board. Shooting back to the Avalon Adventure board game. <clears throat> Use this when the battles break out in Avalon. Okay, so there's that. That's like a dungeon side. And then the reverse side is like an outdoor area. So depending on what, you know, where you are in Avalon, you could use either the outdoor part or the dungeon. 